Many probably remember from a school geography course that the rings of Saturn are a system of flat concentric formations of ice and dust located in the equatorial plane of the planet. Galileo Galilei was the first to see the rings of Saturn. Scientists observed them in their ancient telescope with 20x magnification in 1610, but did not identify the objects as rings. Galileo believed that he saw Saturn as a triple with two appendages of an unknown nature on the sides. He encrypted his observations in long, unpronounceable anagrams. These anagrams were deciphered, revealing that Galileo observed the highest triple planet. He published his observations in a letter to Julian de' Medici on November 13, 1610. In 1612, the rings were visible from the edge, making them invisible when viewed through a telescope. This puzzling observation troubled Galileo. However, they reappeared after about half a century. Later, in 1656, Galileo published the results of his observations in a video on grams. In his essay titled, Decoding of the Anagram, Huygens confirms the existence of the thin, flat rings surrounding Saturn. These rings do not touch the ecliptic and are tilted. Scientists believe that similar rings once existed on Earth. Despite the moon's ability to rise and fall, it is an omnipresent familiar ball shining on the Earth from the night sky. However, scientists hypothesize that if one evening you were to look up into the sky and see a ring similar to those surrounding Saturn instead of the moon, it could indicate the presence of a ring system on Earth. Though already a few billion years ago, they suggest that the ring appeared at the beginning of the formation of the Earth's moon. According to the generally accepted hypothesis of a giant impactor, a planet named Tei collided with ours in the distant past. This collision caused an explosion of matter that flew into the orbit of the Earth. This substance formed a ring that eventually molded into the moon that we see today. If this garbage ring existed within the Roche limit, the Earth could still have a ring in the moon's place. I forgot what it is beyond the limit. In a nutshell, the Roche limit is a law named after the French mathematician Edouard Roche, who found out in 1848 that the gravitational pull of the planet on the moon is uneven. The planet exerts a greater gravitational force on the side of the moon closest to the planet, and less gravitational force on the side facing space. This means that if the moon, ring, or any other object has an orbital trajectory too close to the planet, the uneven gravitational pull can tear it apart. In fact, the Roche limit is the minimum distance at which an object can be from the planet and still hold itself under the influence of its own gravity. If the original ring of the Earth were still in place, or as a result of some other collision in the Earth's orbit, new types of these Earth rings would be interesting. It will all depend on your latitude and direction of movement. The rings would most likely form parallel to the Earth's equator and be visible in the sky with an east-to-west orientation. Near the equator, the rings would look like thin pieces of light that would flash from the far horizons of the Earth and extend into the sky as far as the eye could see. The farther you would go from the equator, the more the appearance of the rings would change. They would become noticeably wider and larger, and from some points of view, they would be so close to the horizon that it will seem as if they can be reached by hand. That before the gravity of the tides remains a mystery even for scientists. It all depends on the composition of our imaginary rings, as we already mentioned in one of the previous videos. The disappearance of the moon will not be a disaster for humanity, although our neighbor has a critical impact on us. We will generally survive. The same can be said about the rings. The effect will probably be that the areas of the planet closest to us will have problems with tides, and perhaps the rotation speed and inclination of the planet will be different. There are no exact answers in this matter, but it is known that the transformation of our satellite into rings will definitely not be fatal for all mankind, just like the moon at present. Hypothetical rings will reflect sunlight back to Earth at night, and as a result will appear to glow in the night sky. They will most likely reflect so much sunlight that our planet will never be completely dark and will remain in mild twilight even late at night. During the day, the rings can also cause the level of light on Earth to rise. 
Just try to think about what we are telling you and show you. The beauty, isn't it, to look at the round moon and the constantly changing landscapes of the rings. In the meantime, don't forget to point the cursor at the thumbs up and put your cosmic light to support the channel. And write in the comments what other ideas you would give to the Earth if the opportunity arises. It will be interesting for us to know your options. Well, we continue so that life does not seem like a barrel of honey. Let's look at the situation from a different angle, not as a due per semper, which in Italian means nothing disappears forever, even the rings of Saturn. And even from a decent speed, calculations say that there are still some 100 million years. And remember, the force of gravity knows its job and attracts their substance, which is a constant rain and falls on the planet. The volume of this rain reaches approximately 11 tons per second. Therefore, the same thing would happen on Earth, albeit on a smaller scale. The areas where the rain would fall would be quite hazardous to health and not inhabited by residents. Such interesting places you would constantly have to watch so that something does not fall on their heads. And now, fantasy aside, the Earth actually already has rings. Scientists from the NASA Research Center, using the planetary radar of the Goldstone Observatory, discovered that at an altitude of 600 kilometers, there is a stream of small particles. 6.4 particles per square kilometer per day, with a size of 1.8 millimeters, with 40% of them concentrated in one or two orbits. One possible explanation is that the dear third planet has a field ring with an inclination of 35.1 tenth of a degree. All gas giants of the solar system, such as Saturn, Jupiter, Uranus, Neptune, asteroids Haumea, Cheriklo, Chiron, and hypothetically near Saturn's satellite Rhea, have rings. The possibility of the presence of short-lived rings, by astronomical standards, in other planets in the past, including near the Earth, is also there. The fall of Phobos in several tens of millions of years may lead to the formation of rings even near Mars. But for now, we have everything. Thanks for your attention. We suggest you like this video and subscribe to the channel.